So today, obviously, you can see we're going to be reviewing the retro mechanical keyboard by 8BitDo that just came out. Super excited about this keyboard. Has a lot to it. Has Bluetooth, has 2.4. Also comes with a giant macro button. Let's get into it. So now let's break open this keyboard because I really want to get into this keyboard. It's on my desk for two days and I want to see what this thing looks like. And so you guys know, so we did actually order both of them, the Famicom version and the NES version. Unfortunately, only the Famicom version came. Uh, the other one's delayed by a week or two, but I'm guessing because the NES version was maybe slightly popular in North America because we had the NES. Um, yeah, and somebody is not happy about that. Anyway, so I really want to get into this, so now let's open this up. If I can get this damn cardboard off here. Holy crap. There we go. Okay. Now, as you can see, we have the keyboard. But we also have a whole bunch of random other goodies. We have stickers. I don't know. Up, down, nuclear, bomb, question mark, heart. I don't know. Anyway. Instruction manual and more stickers. Got all kinds of things you want to put on there. I'm guessing these are for the giant macro button. I'm not sure what 404 for a macro button. I guess, I don't know. I'm not sure. Anyway. <laughs> we also have the giant macro button. This thing is pretty damn cool. The giant macro button, people. I'm not sure what we're going to use this for. I don't know. Maybe we can do a giant going live button. I don't know. Something. The or game show. I'm Chet Gaming Woods. Let's get started. Yeah. <laughs> we do also have, it looks like a little quick start guide thing to uh, the keyboard, which is kind of cool. We'll get into that in a minute. And actually little hot keys too to kind of how you control your keyboard. Hmm. Interesting. And of course, obviously we have a USB-C cable. So, but the keyboard. So the keyboard. So this thing is really, really cool. Love how it sounds. Love how this keyboard sounds. This thing sounds amazing. It looks amazing. It feels durable. Yes, it is plastic. Um, they did get the color like perfect. It is a slight off-white. If you've never seen the original Famicom keyboard that came with the Famicom uh, system over in Japan, it has the same aesthetic to it. And I'll show that up on screen now what that actually looked like. It's not exactly, um, but it is close. Um, and these are real Japanese characters. You can actually use this as a Japanese keyboard, which is really, really cool. Cause I'm guessing it's probably going to sell fairly well cause they got, obviously it's based off of their Famicom. Um, I really enjoy, I love how the Famicom looks. That's why, I, uh, one reason why I'm really excited about this thing. So, be, that being said, here is the keyboard that we made. This thing is really, really cool. I do like the font on this one compared to this one. The fonts are nice, don't get me wrong, on the right 8 bit though. Uh, but I really like the kind of 8 bit fonts that are on the one we made, which is, uh, I believe this is a Red Dragon K552 originally that we modified into an NES keyboard. If you haven't checked out that video, you need to go check it out. Um, we'll try to put the link. It'll probably be in the description too, um, but it'll be also in the end card. Um, but yeah, go check out that video, how we made this. And this was fairly cheap. This is a $25 keyboard uh, that we turned into this. Obviously it wasn't $25 after we get done modifying it, but it also does have USB-C. So yeah, back to the 8-bit though retro keyboard. A lot of cool things. Obviously you have your 2.4 and your Bluetooth on this keyboard and these little buttons that we'll figure out what the hell they do in a minute. Um, so, but the 2.4 gigahertz comes, has this little tiny dongle. And guess what? It's magnetic. Really, really cool. And obviously USB-C and we have our four uh, ports here. We have our four ports. These are plugging in that giant macro button. Um, so you can plug four of them in. So you could have eight 
macro buttons. I guess you could make a giant stream deck if you want to. <laughs> uh, but definitely really cool. I kind of want to get into this keyboard. I want to see what it's made of. I want to see what kind of switches it has. I know they're clicky, but what kind of switches? Uh, and can I distinctly tell them what switches they are? Um, probably not, but we'll give it an attempt. And these also are, so you know, these are PBT keycaps, the same as the ones we did on our keyboard as well. Uh, they're durable. I love PBT keycaps personally. Um, I think they're more durable, they last longer. The print and the font seems to be a little better on them a lot of times. But that's my own personal opinion. I might be completely wrong. The one thing I do have to say, I do love the clickiness in a retro style keyboard. And the main reason why is because like my first computer was like the Trash 80, the TRS 80, if you don't know what that is. Uh, it's a really, really old computer from uh, back in the day. But those kind of keyboards that came with them, and later down the line, we had like the IBM, yeah, the M, yeah, Model M, yeah, Later on down the road, we also had the IBM Model M keyboard, which had a very clicky sound to it. Um, uh, they weren't actually real mechanical. They were mechanical, but not the way mechanical keyboards are made nowadays. Um, does have the same feel, same aesthetic. Keyboards nowadays are kind of made a little better. They're a little more durable, in my opinion. Uh, so, but I love the sound of this keyboard. It sounds really, really good for a clicky keyboard. Um, and um, there's not a lot of rattle. Even the space bar actually, actually sounds pretty good. Along with the shift and uh, the backspace. They are pretty good. I personally think these, I want to say the stabilizers are looped. I think they're looped. They sound really, really good. Anyway, I want to get into, so let's pull a keycap. Let's pull a switch. Let's see what they look like. Okay, now let's get this keycap off. Let's see what's in here. We're going to pull. So this should be fairly easy if it is a real hot swap pull. I think it is. 8 does make some quality products. Um, so yeah, oh, that is, that was butter smooth pulling this key, pulling this switch. Yeah, that was butter smooth pulling the switch out. As you can see, there's a little, little switch, a little switch. So yeah, I'm not sure what kind of switches these are. Um, cause it's hard to say what kind of switch has a black ish gray housing. I don't have any familiar sense of what switches this is. It doesn't strike any memory or anything but who knows i haven't in general i do think it's, it's a quality switch it does sound good for a clicky switch it does sound really good there is no rattle to this switch it just has the pure click sound it's a nice switch and as you know obviously if you want to hot swap these switches this is the real test can we hot swap it can we put an even louder switch in here do we want to put an even louder switch in here this question because we have some jades, which are the loudest switch you can buy, standard. There is a hybrid, but I think it's uh, navies and jades. I think those are the loudest, actually, technically, if you do a hybrid between the two. Uh, but these are really, really loud. And if you don't know, we used these on our Halloween keyboard last year uh, to make the loudest keyboard. That's also a really cool video. Um, and obviously, it's getting a lot of views right now because of Halloween. Um, anyway, so let's check this out and let's not use a broken one so these are hot swappable obviously with standard mx there we go we now we now have a jade in our escape key which is really cool because you want that really loud click when you're hitting escape i don't know why you just have to. Let's get into because I'm sure you're wondering what those other random buttons do. Uh, and we'll get into that. So the first button, this obviously right here, this little one with the little Wi-Fi signal, kind of that's your pair button. The second button's a star. Obviously, you're wondering what that is. It's the fast key mapping button. Now, the reason why it's called a fast key mapping button, this allows you to hold two keys down to program them. It will actually blink for a few seconds. And then you can actually click the big button and actually have it programmed to that big old button, which is really, really cool. So you could have an easy macro set to your giant button. Like if you wanted to do like say control C or and control V to each one of these buttons, you could have copy paste. So then we have our profile button. That's this one right here. That's a little heart. That's your profile button uh, to change out different profiles. 
So the one thing you can do with this actual keyboard as well, uh, along with like programming it and stuff on the keyboard and the buttons, you can actually download their software and actually do it on the computer as well, which is really, really cool. And you're wondering why are these A, B buttons? These are programmable buttons to kind of do what you want. They're kind of the function buttons kind of thing. So yeah, there's A, B. I really want to show you what the like fast programmable button is, the star button. This is how you program the giant button, which is really, really cool. So it's fairly easy. You just press the star once and it starts blinking. Hold the two buttons you're going to actually program, which this one's gonna be win and C, and we're gonna hit the giant button. That'll program it to the B giant button. Now I also want to program win and V to A. So now that we have our buttons programmed, let's show you how that actually works in a demo. Obviously we have Google Docs highlighted here. Let's highlight our text and hit our giant button to copy it. Go to a next line and hopefully nothing fails. This should paste. Boom, 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 boom. And there is your giant macro button working. It's pretty cool. And obviously, don't forget to subscribe. I kind of want to tear this thing down. I want to see what it looks like inside. I want to see, just for my own sake, how well this thing's built, really. Um, I'm sure some of you are curious about that as well. So let's get into that. Let's get the tools out. Uh, let's get this thing apart. So as you can see, as I'm doing this, this has just tiny little clips and you can use any kind of like little tiny little plastic pry bar thing, little thing you can do to take apart cell phones, whatnot. Uh, don't use metal. You will break something. Uh, definitely use a plastic or even a guitar pick if you have one around. Those actually work really well. I've taken apart a ton of devices with just guitar picks. So anyway, and they snap off pretty easy. Just be gentle with it and it should come right off. And as you can see, we have a, holy crap, that is actually a fairly durable cable. I am fairly impressed with that. Okay, as you can see, so there's not as many dampeners as I would put in a keyboard. When I've done it, I've used like, like uh, air conditioner insulation. I've used uh, um, basically different kinds of plastics and whatnot. Um, you can use packing material, stuff like that to dampen sound. Um, for this, the bottom plate just has this little tiny piece of rubber to kind of keep it in place. But, 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 that's a big but. Okay, so that's the bottom, that's the casing. So this is our, this is our PCB. So this is our, so this is our PCB. This is our big old battery. I'm not sure how many milliamps battery is. I was trying to look it up, but I'm not completely sure. Um, and as you can see, Unlike some of the other keyboards we have modified where I said they weren't exactly hot swappable when they said they were. And the reason why is because they didn't have these. These are actually hot swappable sockets. Um, these are make something truly hot swappable. The other ones are kind of, it's weird. It's like soldered halfway. It's, it's really strange to explain. Um, it's the way companies get away with doing hot swappable without actually being hot swappable and they can actually break really easy. So I wouldn't recommend doing hot swap with those kind of keyboards. Um, but this is really well made. And this thing is super durable. This keyboard is really in place. There's, this thing's not moving, it's not flexing. Uh, there's padding in between this and the plate, which is really, really nice. You don't see that on too many keyboards, especially $100 keyboards. And I don't think I mentioned that. This keyboard is just $100. Uh, that's just the keyboard. It's an actual, actual $20, I believe, for the macro button, if you wanna get that, I believe. Not positive, because ours came together in one box. Um, super impressed with the build quality. Um, but that's in general though, if you've looked at our channel, a long time ago we've actually done reviews on two different 8-bit dough controllers. Uh, the 8-bit dough uh, and the SNES controller. That was a really good video. Not so proud of the NES one. But they generally just make really, really good products and really durable products. Um, and all the newest kind of, uh, controllers, keyboards, obviously, you can use the app to actually modify them, customize them, um, or update the firmware, because uh, they're also really good with that. 
They're just in general, I think this is a quality product. It's a really quality product. I am beyond impressed for a $100 keyboard. I've bought more than a few $100 keyboards and the build quality is super impressive. Um, I would expect this actually kind of build quality on a keyboard I would got from like drop or something on a group buy that would have cost me like $400. So yeah, for this to be only $100 and it comes with a big old macro button and Famicom aesthetic, yeah. All right, so we tore this thing down. It came back together fairly smoothly. Like I said, I am impressed. Uh, the teardown was very easy. So if you really did want to mod this thing, it actually is going to be a fairly easy job. There's really no reason to. This thing is very impressive. The only thing I would mod is put some different switches in it. I do like the quickie switches. Uh, they are nice. Uh, myself personally, do I do like linear switches better? Um, so yeah. Really, really good. And of course, you cannot deny you're getting this giant thing with it, which you can turn into anything. And if you're just a simple streamer that doesn't have a lot of scenes, why not just make this another scene? You can just switch between the two if you don't have anything complicated going on. Um, or if you're a speed run, you could also use it as a foot pedal to uh, stamp out your times, which would be nice. Um, so yeah. Really, really impressed with this. I would definitely recommend buying this for a hundred bucks. And like I said, I'm pretty sure the ones we got, this was a hundred bucks with this, but I think that was on launch kind of thing. And I believe what they said, these were gonna be $20 extra. So yeah, and it's kind of cool because you can buy extra of them because you can hook up four. So why not? Um, just definitely really, really impressed. The fact that just the build quality, the aesthetic, everything about this thing. Um, only thing, the only thing that some of you, only some of you might be just a little disappointed of, and I know it's only those true gamers out there, no RGB. So no RGB at all, but that's all right because we got Famicom aesthetic and it's great. That'll be this video. Remember, go check out other keyboard videos. We've done more than a few, especially go check out the NES keyboard. That thing came out pretty awesome. And like I said, I do like the fonts that we use compared to this one, but hey, that's what it is. Go check out all our other videos because obviously we're putting out videos more often this year. Uh, we're gaining subscribers and we thank you all for subscribing. Um, and at the end of this video, don't forget to subscribe, especially if you're a fan of the Famicom. I personally am. I collect Famicom, so.